Yeti's longest project to date. Over five years testing and developing the new 160E. It is finally here and we are excited to share our feedback from the ride camp in Crested Butte, Colorado and some of our initial testing back home here in the Pacific Northwest. Back in early July, we flew out to Crested Butte, Colorado to ride bikes with the Yeti crew and Jared Graves and learn about this awesome new bike. And um, really it was an exciting opportunity and got to learn a lot. During the trip, we got to pick the brain of Chris Conroy as well as lead engineer Peter Zawistowski, better known as Stretch. And um, he was really one of the vital members helping make this bike possible and this new Sixfinity design happen. Um, it was awesome to not only get to see how the bike performed, get to ride with the legend Jared Graves and try to chase him down some amazing trails, but really just learn about this new bike um, and, and what took them five years to make this thing happen. All right, so let's get into some of the details on this thing. It is a 170 mil front, 160 mil rear, 29 inch wheel. Yeti, one of the things they really harped on during this camp and in their press release material is their racing heritage. They love racing and to them and uh, to many people, 29ers are undeniably faster on the track. This thing was designed to be run 29. It can be mulleted, however, so if you want to run a 27 and a half inch rear wheel, you can do that. Um, you'd probably want to stick with a 2.6 inch tire to maintain the geometry um, and you know ground clearance, etc. But it can be mulleted. They made the commitment to go full 29 for race speed. Um, it sees a new patent pending suspension platform, which we'll get into later. It is basically called the Sixfinity, which is a six bar version of their Switch Infinity four bar linkage system. It uses a Shimano 630 watt hour battery to power the Shimano EP8 drive unit. Something that's very cool about this bike is that Yeti will have a consumer facing app where they will be able to share rider profiles and uh, tunes that Jared Graves and their other e-bike Enduro World Series racers have developed for those events. So if you want to upload those and modify those tunes on your own bike, you'll be able to see what the racers are using and copy that on your own ride. Moving out from there, we've got a DH rated carbon frame, dual crown ready. Um, if you want to put a dual crown on this thing, it can handle it. So. Um, there's some really cool customizable uh, cable routing ports. So if you want to go wireless or customize uh, where you route your cables, if you're a moto brake lever kind of guy, etc., cetera, um, all neatly run. There's a very cool custom one up chain guide with cable guide, um, tube in tube routing in the rear end, very neat little uh, mud guard back here that helps protect that linkage and the back of the bike and a drain hole down here at the lower shock area. All stuff that we used a lot, as you'll be able to see as we rode through creeks and river crossings and uh, a little bit of mud out in Colorado. So this bike will be available in a few different models, two different colors, and you've basically got a C-series or T-series, and the price ranges from $10,100 up to $13,600. Um, depending on carbon wheel upgrades and uh, if you're in the C or T category. So I am 5'11", I chose to ride a size large. Um, this bike has a 480 millimeter reach, which I find to be very comfortable. 475 is kind of my, my sweet spot, so 480 is in, in that zone and I'm definitely happy with that. 64 and a half degree head tube angle, a steep 78 degree C tube angle, um, and I found that to be a really nice balance. Uh, some folks are probably going to wish for a slacker head tube angle. I was, I was pleased because it, it still allowed us to climb a lot of steep technical terrain. 
but gave us the confidence we needed uh, when we wanted to go downhill very fast. A, a lot of the trails that we rode in Crested Butte are dirt bike, moto trails, so we were definitely hitting high 30 mile an hour range and this thing felt plenty stable, plenty predictable, and, um, and, and very confident. Out back, one of the big reasons that they went with this Sixfinity system was to create a short rear end. 446 millimeter chain stays give a total wheelbase of 1,262 millimeters, again, on our size large. So um, packaging, as you can imagine, with an e-bike creates its own challenges uh, compared to a, a traditional uh, analog or whatever you want to call it, bike. Um, and knowing that Yeti wanted to stay with a 29 inch rear wheel for racing. They didn't want to compromise and use a mullet configuration to keep that rear end short. They wanted to make it as short as possible with full 29er. And that meant rethinking their suspension platform. And um, that was kind of one of the driving forces behind Sixfinity. So Sixfinity is a Stevenson type one true six bar linkage. Um, again, the switch infinity found on the other Yeti mountain bike line is a four bar. Uh, system. This is a six bar and it, it does have some similarities in how it behaves in the way that it switches going through the travel. So on this six bar bike, Yeti is able to mount the rear wheel and rear brake on the seat stay. And the reason that they say that is important is this is the member that dictates anti-squat and anti-rise numbers, things that are very differently tuned than they would be on an analog bike. Anti-squat numbers are gonna be greatly different because of the acceleration that an e-bike can produce compared to an analog bike. And anti-rise numbers also change quite a bit compared to their analog brothers. Uh, we'll let Peter discuss a little bit what anti-rise and anti-squat are and how they are tuned differently on this bike and why that matters. Right on, uh, my name is Peter Zalistowski and I am the Director of Engineering at Eddie Cycles. All right, Peter, you've got a pretty uh, interesting nickname. What is it? <laughs> yeah, Stretch is usually what people call me here. So pretty obvious, but uh, stuck and it's been here for a long time, so. Always. Right on. So yeah. what has your role been in the development of this e-bike specifically? Yeah, so really from start to finish, uh, along with the rest of our engineering team, uh, the entire development from the IP to uh, what you're seeing here today. Awesome, and if you were to kind of focus in on one of your favorite design elements about this six bar linkage or sixfinity as you guys are calling it yeah what would that be yeah i think for us it's just uh i mean for me mainly is, is that it's a culmination of maybe the three main variables that we care about so we're looking at anti-rise anti-squat and leverage rate is really nailing all of those along with the geometry to briefly summarize yeah. for for those who may not know what is anti-rise uh, Anti-rise is really related to the deceleration of the vehicle. So how is the vehicle going to behave when you're braking? Um, and so there's a balance between how the geometry is preserved versus how much traction you're going to have. Okay, anti-squat? Anti-squat is the opposite. So how is the vehicle going to behave during acceleration? Um, so is the rear end going to squat or is it going to extend? And um, yeah, 100% is going to be your equilibrium point. Awesome. And then in, in our presentation yesterday, we obviously learned about some of the similarities and differences between Switch Infinity and Six Infinity and why they are so different um, on an e-bike versus an analog bike, just because of the rate of acceleration, the extra mass and movement under deceleration um, and, and kind of your design features, right? What you wanted to focus on. Can you kind of briefly touch on what your goals were and why anti-squat, anti-rise are different on an e-bike versus your pedal bikes. Yeah, for sure. So basically uh, the main thing is we wanted to keep the same overall trend or the, the shape of the curve that we have with, with Switch Infinity. So we have a nice staple band of anti-squat around the sag point and then a very non-linear drop later off, uh, later in the travel so that we uh, basically decouple that chain force uh, later in the travel. So we wanted to maintain that general behavior, but we also wanted to reduce the magnitude. So with that added acceleration, um, we wanted to, to basically have a bit more bias towards traction as opposed to efficiency and stability because you just it's just not needed when you have that uh, motor power. Awesome. And then um, with that little bar that's on the six infinity, can you tell us about why that's important and what that helps do? Oh, uh, you're talking about the, like the, the, the vertical bar that you see there. Correct. Yeah, just, you know, one of the six bars in, in the entire um, assembly of that linkage. And so they're all very critical. So one thing to note is that the six bar itself is, is actually a, we call a true six bar. So the wheel path is dictated by all six of those members. Um, so that's just one of the, the various um, members that we have to, to tune to get exactly those properties that we're after. Okay. 
<clears throat> what are the similarities and differences between six finity and switch finity? Yeah, I think relative to your last question, you can start there, that, that vertical bar that you were mentioning. If you look at that as you go through the travel, as you kind of cross the, the center of the, the rocker pivot, the rocker front triangle pivot, that's the inflection pivot or inflection point of the lower pivot. So we have similar behavior in that that lower link um, first initially rotates up and then it rotates down. And that's really responsible for that anti-squat behavior that, we, that, we, that you see there in that curve where you start um, with the stable band around sag and then have a non-linear drop afterwards. Okay. And for people who are wondering why you didn't just keep using Switch Infinity yeah. on the e-platform, what were kind of the main reasons or constraints there? Yeah, so the first thing is we, we knew that we wanted to have similar properties to Switch Infinity, but we also wanted to tune them differently, as we mentioned, for the added mass and also for the added accel acceleration. So we wanted to maintain those things. We also wanted to maintain a specific geometry, and we didn't want to give up on any of those things. Um, and so with the, the packaging that's involved with an e-bike, with the motor and, and the battery, um, you have a lot of prime real estate for the pivots that you would normally use on, use on say, a four bar or, an, or a pedal bike that's taken up. And so we wanted to make sure that we were hitting all those key variables, um, kinematically and geometrically, um, but doing it with that difficult packaging. And so the six bar allows us to, to tune that way and have virtual points that aren't possible with a, with a four bar. Awesome. Cool, man. Well, thanks very much. I appreciate it. Um... It's been awesome getting to ride with you and learn a whole lot of uh, really high-end nerdery. And uh, so thanks for taking some time and explaining stuff to me off camera and today to the viewers. And uh, excited to go get this little bonus ride lap in this yeah, morning. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you and really appreciate it. Awesome. So essentially what Peter is saying is that there is less compromise that needs to be made for efficiency on an e-bike so they can tune this bike to have more sensitivity more traction and a more supple rear end because you've got a motor and battery helping you get uphill. So on an analog bike, you're gonna have a little bit stiffer of a rear end while pedaling because you want to maximize efficiency. You know, the, the human body is an imperfect machine and we fatigue quickly. So we wanna maximize the efficiency from the machine. And to do that, you're compromising traction and sensitivity at the rear end. They're not worried about that with an e-bike because you've got power. Conversely, when it comes to braking and, and the anti-rise setting, this bike is a lot heavier. It's regularly at higher rates of speed. So traction was a main concern with this bike. Yeti wanted it to be able to slow down for the tires to stay glued on the ground and to be able to slow this heavy thing down. Whereas on their pedal bikes, they wanted to maintain geometry, keep the bike up in its optimal geometry setting. And because of that, the rear end will actually stiffen up and it will skid across the top of the trail. Everyone's probably felt that when you're on the brakes, your bike stiffens up. The suspension just doesn't work as well. Um, that's just science. And on the 160E, they tuned that anti-rise to 65% uh, rather than like the 100% that you might find on an analog bike. That did mean on the trail, um, I felt the fork dive, the rear end kind of changed a little bit. Um, which is a side effect. When we got the bike back home and had a little bit more time, we added uh, volume reducers to the fork, which kind of helped add a little bit more progression in that bike and keep it upright and in a little better uh, position. The upside to that obviously is traction, braking performance, and a, a nice supple feel on the brakes or off. Another neat feature and something that really impressed me out on the trail is the adjustable leverage rate. The bike will ship here in the center position, which is a 30% leverage rate. And if you pull that chip out and put in the, uh, the offset piece, you can go to 25% or 35% progression. And essentially what Yeti is calling that is a, a stiff and platform, playful and poppy, and then in the middle at 30% is kind of your all around. Um, the bike ships to consumers. When we showed up, it was set in the 30% setting and on one of our long descents towards the end of the day, um, the, the trail was called Teokali Ridge. Awesome, fast, fun with some good chunky roots and rocks. I was noticing a little bit of foot fatigue and a little hand fatigue and, and just kind of, it was just hanging up a tiny bit. Um, and uh, basically when I got back and talked with Stretch and kind of told him my feedback, we looked at my travel, sag, compression settings and everything. And, and we decided to put it into the plush and poppy setting. So we took it from 30 to 35%. We went out the next morning and re-rode that same loop. 
and I felt a very big difference. Actually, it was really nice to see that on the climb, the plushness off the top was noted. Um, in the saddle, you know, my butt didn't feel like it was quite bouncing off of all the rocks uh, while climbing. When we got down into, the, or when we got over to the downhill, the bike had a little bit more spring to it. So kind of jumping or trying to go for gaps on natural trail features or charging across routes and hitting them at speed, it definitely felt more supple and had a little bit more pop. So um, it was really cool to see those settings change the bike's performance and behavior on the trail. Um, after talking with Jared Graves at the camp, he definitely said he likes that plush and poppy setting, that 35%. Uh, depending on, on the race course or your local terrain, um, you know, you may find yourself using that 25% chip uh, or position a little bit more often. But for me, I'm definitely going to be sticking that 35% as uh, I like that plush poppy feel. Uh, so moving on to the rest of the bike's performance as a whole, I was very impressed so far. We did a couple solid days of riding in Crested Butte. Um, one day we put well over 5,500 feet elevation in and was very impressed with a first day out on a new bike. So it, it may have taken Yeti five years to come out with this thing, um, you know, and a lot of evolution from their first 27 and a half inch aluminum test mule that was based off of the SB platform to this 29er. But I think it's one of the best first releases from a brand that I've ridden in recent years. And, and a lot of that could be because Yeti was being patient and they've kind of been able to see what trends are going on, what's happening in the e-bike space and come out with something that's already, you know, leaps ahead of what a bike company would have released five years ago, just because of the nature of technology and the improvements that we've seen. So um, while there could be a lot of Yeti fans that were bummed that they couldn't buy a Yeti e-bike five years ago, uh, the wait is over because this thing is really sweet and um, I've been impressed so far. The geometry was very nice and balanced. I thought that the bike popped very nicely. Um, I'm definitely a big fan of, of having a lighter floaty style of, of riding. I like to jump and pop off of anything I can find on the side of the trail. I like looking for gaps where I'm landing into rough, chundery, bumpy terrain and um, the bike does equally well so far uh, taken off on small features and landing in super chunky gnarly stuff obviously you know our, our time on the bike has been pretty limited so far uh, after the media camp yeti took the bikes back did a little refresher had to get them to a few other folks before they could mail them to us so we haven't had a ton of time here on our local trails just yet but so far very similar impressions we look forward to riding this thing a ton more in the coming months and uh doing our, our best to uh, ride this thing as aggressively and uh, roughly as we can to put it to the test, see how the longevity and durability hold up. But um, so far it is a very solid machine. There really isn't a ton of criticisms we have when it comes to this bike. Um, we are gonna, like I said, we, we did have to add some volume reducers to the fork because of that um, anti-rise setting. The traction is good, but we felt that it kind of dove a little bit and shifted our weight forward and, and caused that front end to squat. So that was something that uh, we're gonna keep working on to ensure that we get dialed. Um, aside from that, our concerns that we had about that rough chattery feeling off the top were addressed by going to that 35% uh, leverage rate setting. And, um, you know, I think Yeti said they did something like 20 revisions and, and tunes with Fox on this custom shock. So uh, it, it looks like the time and effort that they spent definitely paid off on that. So um, overall, solid, solid riding bike. Um, you know, we haven't ridden a Yeti bike for a number of years and it was really cool to get out, meet the guys from Yeti, ride with them and just see what they're up to. And um, it seems like they've been grinding away in silence over here for the last five years because this bike really delivers. Um, definitely something we're gonna be riding a lot more in the future. So thank you guys for watching. We appreciate it. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and uh, we'll do our best to get back to you all. And if it's something that uh, is over our heads, we'll reach out to Stretch or any of the other crew at Yeti and get back to you. So thanks again, guys. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button as we are working hard to grow this channel and it would mean a lot to us if you went and hit that. Thank you for watching and we'll see you out on the trails.